Today, we're going to look at how to set up volume profile in Thinkorswim. And we're going to look at two different ways of doing it. This is going to be one way here. And this is going to be the other way here. They both have their uses. And I will explain it as we go through it. So first, let's define what a volume profile is. A volume profile indicator in Thinkorswim lays the profile sideways here and you could see at various price levels the amount of volume being traded at those levels see that and this middle point here is called the point of control that's where most of the transactions occur at it's point of control and if you look here it's more clear on this nq mnq one than it is on the es but up here this is called the value area high and this is called the value area low and this here is also value area high, value area low. The difference between these two is this is one standard deviation and this is two standard deviations. And we'll show you how to do that. Uh, the, the normal way of setting it up, you just get the ability for one standard deviation. Uh, deviation being uh, 60 some odd percent of the transactions, I forget the exact numbers, uh, uh, the, the movement and all is going to happen over 60% of the time in this area right here. The other 30% something is going to go in this area here or further. Uh, maybe even to the profile low or up here to profile high. This is helpful because of this point of control. This is what makes it really helpful. This is where price wants to go to naturally this point of control price is either coming to it or traveling away from it either coming to it or traveling away from it if you find price up at a, uh, up at the extreme here in this uh, second deviation we can expect at some point that price is going to roll over and come back down and it's going to try and go to the point of control now this here is on a one hour chart with a five day look back this kind of gives you the bigger picture what can happen over a matter of five days it could, you see here it has went from the uh, extreme low here the the uh, second deviation low up hit the point of control and it ranged for a little while consolidated for a little while at the point of control you'll find that to be very often this is the M M M MNQ and this is the MES you see how they range there so it's a good point of control tells you a couple things. If price is coming up, that's probably where it's going. If price is coming down, that's probably where it's going. It may take you know, a few days on this particular setup for it to get there, but it's probably going to go. And if you uh, prefer to trade trends and you want to stay out of the chop, point of control is a good indication that, hey, you're going to come up into a chop. Maybe it's a good time to go ahead Take profit and then wait to see which way price breaks out from this point of control. Just remember, when it's coming in from the bottom, it's heading to the point of control. When it's coming down from the top, it's heading to the point of control. Now this here just gives you a kind of a, a, a an overall bigger picture. I, I trade on the hour chart. Uh, you will read a lot of, a lot of people say use the 30 minute chart. The person who taught me, Corey Rosenblum, who taught me about the volume profile I don't know, three years ago, I guess. Uh, he uses a 30-minute chart, but I, I trade off the hour chart, so I used the hour chart, and it's been fairly accurate for me for what I do. So read up on it, watch some other videos about it to, to, to get what you want, but I want to look at the other one. This is where it gets good for intraday trading. This here is just taking a day at a time and giving us the volume profile for that specific day. Rather, and I'm going. I'm still looking back five days here, but it's breaking them down to individual days. All of this is the break up breakdown of this right here. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. And if you'll notice, uh, let's see right here. Price come in from the bottom. It went up to the point of control. It ranged for a little while. It consolidated for a little while. Then it headed up. Now it went past the 68 or 60 some odd percent move in the uh, 
first standard deviation went ahead and went to number two and it just kept on going this is just one of them anomalies sometimes it does that it got gets up here and it hits the uh second deviation uh, value area high and it comes back down hits this point of control comes down to the value area low and bounces off of it and goes right back to the point of control do you see that let me spread this open a little bit maybe you can see it a little bit better let's try that again so it comes in hits the uh, from the bottom hits the point of control ranges for a little bit and then blast off here blast through the first value area hits the second value area keeps on going into the night uh, in the third one here and it just is a rocket ship it does that sometimes it's not always going to obey these things but notice when it got up to here it stopped tried to poke through but it comes back down to the point of control and then eventually to the first standard deviation by area low comes over here ranges point of control ranges some more and breaks away comes down to the first value area low then all the way down to the second standard deviation bounces off it shoots back up hits this point of control ranges comes back hits here this is one of them times where it did not come back down did not rotate back down comes in here to the next day but it did hit it up here and it rotated back down and look where it went <laughs> it went from it's just when it's breaking out of extremes like this you know there's going to be a big whiplash at some point and today was the day this is a, a january 24th uh, what is it wednesday january 24th and i've been i was expecting this sooner than this actually yesterday or the day before but we got it today and this is what it did it bounced off that and went all the way back down it didn't even stop at the point of control it just kept on going you notice it did get a little bounce there and I actually was able to catch that bounce right there off of here. Uh, but it did get a little bounce here. Come up, hit the point of control, and just tore back down. And then back down, it pierced the, uh, the extreme value area low, the second standard deviation. And then it's creating a new one for tonight right here. It's the, there's not much. It, uh, there's not much. Uh, they're pretty much worthless at night, the... the uh, the volume profile is worthless at night because it's building a new one each day it builds a new one in this particular one here now you can still look at the big picture keep in mind where can price go it can go like this right probably range right here for a little while once it gets here i'm i'm my bias tonight is that it's going to come down here to this point of control at some point tonight where it goes from there, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Does it break up this way? Does it break down this way? But I'm guessing at some point tonight, look, the MES is almost there already. It's going to hit this point of control. So that's that's the big picture. If you if if, if I were going to trade tonight, which I I don't trade at night very often, I, I would go short, thinking it's going to go here. I got a few other things on here to tell me that too. But so we want to look at how can we set this up. How do we set this up with the standard deviation and the two standard deviation profile here and have the same thing so we can intraday trade each day like this? Well, that's what we're going to get into. So let me start by opening up a clean chart. And let's uh, start with the volume profile the big one i'm going to do an hour look back it's going to be one hour intraday five day look back one hour and then i'm going to come up here to my indicator tab and i'll click on it and i'm just going to type in volume and put the letter p there i'll click this twice get it over here twice the first one, the default setting is 70, one standard deviation, 68 point something. So I'm just going to change mine to 68 and leave everything else as is for now. I'm going to show you something real quick. Let's just look at it, what it looks like right now. So this is it. We have the point of control. We have the uh, lower value area and we have the upper value area. 
And this here, I, I'm not sure what that is. What is this? Oh, let's take this one out real quick. That's what that is. Okay. All right. Let's just take the first, uh, second one out for right now. This is the one with the one standard deviation. We got the point of control. We have the uh, lower, the value area low, the value area highs, one standard deviation here. That's what we're looking at. You notice most of the volume transacted here. And just to think about these, these areas here, uh, just something very important you need to know. Uh, Corey's word for this was air pockets. Air pockets. If price penetrates into those, because there's so little resistance, so little volume, it can move through it swiftly, very swiftly. Oftentimes it will come up, hit it, bounce off of it, come back, come up, hit it, bounce off of it, come back. But then sometimes it'll come down in here, and then before you know it, you're down here. I mean, like super fast. And then it gets over here and super fast. So think about these pockets of air. There's not a whole lot of resistance there. That means price can travel very quickly through them if it decides to head that way. So that's something you need to know for that. But anyhow, so this is one standard deviation to point of control. Let's put the second one on there. And its default is 70. We want to change this to 95. That's roughly a second standard deviation. And we want to change some things here. The value area high, we don't want it the same color as the first one. So we're just going to change that color. I change it to dark green. The value area low, we're going to change it to dark green. Now you have your two standard deviation areas. That's how you get two standard deviations on this. And if you want to shrink this point of control, make it look a little bit better, we can go in here. And we'll go up here where it says automatic. We just change that to tick size and we need to do it on the second one too. Automatic to tick size. Now you may want to come down here, POC, point of control, and change the width a little bit, say to about three. Well, let me show you what it looks like if you don't. So there, it's very small now, it's hard to see. So we want to be able to see it because that is the most important part of this volume profile is that point of control because price is either going away from it or coming to it. Going away whoop, oops, going away from it or coming to it. That's so always doing that. So as you see here, ranged. Finally broke out, went up, hit this, come back down, and so forth and so on. So there you go. That's how you set that up. Now, if we want to change this to look like this, here, let me just change it right here. I'm going to show you how to do this too. A load of style here, volume profile daily. All right, if we want to change it to this, what we need to do uh, is go back to or one we just set up, which, by the way, you might want to save this as a style. Let me show you real quick. So you can have it for any stock, so you don't have to reset this up every time. So just go to style. Save style as, and we're going to, I'm going to call this YouTube volume. One, because we're going to do a second one. Click include patterns and study set. And save. Now let me just reopen this, and notice we is gone. If I want to go here, load style, YouTube profile volume one, and there it is. If I want to change it to Apple, still have it. So there it is. So if we want to change this though to to the daily, like I'm showing you, so you can do intraday trading on it. We want to go to uh, settings. We we'll have to do this to both of them now. We're going to go to uh, chart profile. It will be hour. On expansion, no. On expansion is what puts it over here to the right. And uh, we're going to click OK. And we're going to do the same here. We're going to come down to, uh, we need to change that to tick size. Uh, chart, one hour. On expansion, no. Click OK, apply, and there we go. Excuse me, uh, don't change that to hour. 
that was my bad my bad you want to change these to daily uh, excuse me that was my bad day and day hour wouldn't do you any good it's too condensed there you go and so now we have our dailies with a five day look back like i had on the hour uh the hour chart the main one so you can get the big picture now you're getting the little picture for each day what is good about this is that let's go ahead and pull this down here expand this a little bit so we're looking let's take this one for example we see it bounced off here so we see, say we watched it come down here and like you know that's probably going to be a good place to buy it you might have some other indicators letting you know that or whatnot so you get in right here, where do you place your target? Well, if you have, let's say, two contracts, you place your first target somewhere right underneath this one. And you place your next target right underneath this one. It gives you a place to put your targets. Where do you put your stop loss? You put your stop loss you know, a couple points below this right here. Now that doesn't always work. You can get punched, knocked out. But that would be a good place to put a stop loss. Uh, if you're buying this, you got your target here, where are you going to put your stop loss? You put your stop loss up underneath here. Right? Now that may be considered a big stop loss for many. But hey, you lose more money by getting your stops hit when it turned around and went your way than when you don't. Right? So it's worth it to look at these places for places to put stop losses and in uh, places to enter the market at and so that's how you do it in, on the on the daily we see up here it went up here it hit this we anticipated a comeback right what did it do it come back came back and what did it do then it ranged for a little bit and then it broke down it come down here it hit here it bounced up a little bit it went all the way up here as a matter of fact so there was a, a chance that it was going to reverse. The next candle says, nope, it's not going to reverse because of where this closed and the next candle. So that's how, you, that's how you use the volume profile. If this has helped you, how about leaving a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Especially smash that like button so do you to help the YouTube al algorithm find this. I sure would appreciate it. You have a good day.